Jared Stansberry, CycloneFanatic.com, joins us, covers Iowa State as we go through the Big 12, touching on a program or two whenever we possibly can, leading up the Big 12 media days. And thanks for your time, Jared. Uh, my question is, uh, we got the poll, what, about a week or so ago from Joni at the Big 12, and I have not, I just stare at it. Like, I, I don't even know how to piece it together. Where do I start? Where would you say Iowa State should be among the 14 teams, at least in the preseason poll? Well, I, I have to admit I have about the same problem uh, when I when I started looking at my ballot as well. So I've, it's just been sitting in my email inbox for the last week. Uh, it stares at me every day telling me to fill it out. But for Iowa State, as far as, far as them, I mean, I think, you know, I think anywhere kind of in the – in the middle of that seven, eight, nine range probably would, is probably pretty solid. And I think, you know, anybody who, who looks at this conference right now going into this season, you know, you have to feel like there's probably a bunch of teams that are all pretty close and we could have some really, some really great parity really across the board where, you know, basically everybody is pretty, uh, is pretty competitive on a week to week basis. And, um, that, that to me is what makes it so hard is that, you know, outside of, I, I guess it, you know, you, it depends on what you think of the top grouping, but, um, you know, I feel like really outside of the top three, four, like it, you could go just about any order and, and make a convincing argument. Jared, uh, as far as the offseason goes, I know we talked to you shortly after spring ball. I know that the recruiting is going on for everybody. He's picked up a, a running back, what was it, just a few hours ago, Dylan Lee, uh, pledging to the Cyclones. But uh, how would you describe just sort of the post-spring ball offseason in terms of the recruiting focus and, and kind of getting the rest of the ducks in a row here before we hit media days next month? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think from, you know, from a recruiting standpoint and things like that, it's been, obviously it's been ramping up here over the, the last week or so. And, uh, they've had guys on campus each of the last two weekends, had two big, two big visit weekends and hoping to get some commitments out of those. I have two of them so far this week, but you're know, hoping to add to that, uh, add to that total throughout the, throughout the week. I mean, the big story that's really dominated since spring ball, you know, it has nothing to do with football and that's the, uh, is the gamble. Uh, you know, just surrounding Iowa State and Iowa athletics in general, and uh, you know, members of the football team were you know among those that uh, uh, you know that were implicated in that. And you know, we don't know about punishments or anything like that at this point. We don't even know the the individuals that are involved, but uh, you know, it's just one of those things that that uh, has kind of that hangs over everything uh, during the off season. What do you expect the punishment to be? Is there even a guess? Is Do we have any clue on it? Sometimes you think, okay, maybe it's two to four games for whatever, and then it may be like they're gone for the year. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but what do you kind of – what's the thought there? Yeah, I mean, right now, the last I knew, what they were basically waiting on was, uh, you know, finding out how much people had bet on, what they had placed bets on, and things like that, and – and really, it's going to come down to, to that because once they had that information, they were they, they would self report the violation to the NCAA, and then it would go before an appeal, uh, a, you know, a student athlete reinstatement panel, and they would you know be the ones that would set the punishment. And uh, it's a complicated situation. It's one that hasn't had to be to be adjudicated too many times. Uh, there was one case a couple of years ago where a, a linebacker at Virginia Tech, I think he bet on the NBA playoffs or something like that. And, uh, had to you know pay the pay the money that he had bet uh, pay it to some charity and then I think he uh, was suspended for nine games but then upon appeal it was reduced to six so it's just right now it's just it's kind of wait and see mode and um, and when we don't have the information of you know how much was bet you know what people were betting on things like that you know there's still just logistical pieces of that to, to get figured out so I mean. It, it's conceivable you could lose somebody for a half. You could lose somebody for an entire season. You know, I think uh, it's just we don't know. Uh, and it's all going to kind of come down to, you know, what the what that student-athlete reinstatement panel makes a decision on here eventually. Jared, I don't know about you, but, um, I mean, you're a little bit of a younger guy still. I mean, I think enough to relate to, to college kids and whatnot, but – um, I don't know about you as far as like sports gambling things like me. I'm a total novice. Like it's not legal here in Texas. I don't try to find a way around it, but I, I am a little bit older and I'm shocked just to hear how thorough and widespread it is. Were you surprised at all when you heard like, oh man, there's some Iowa State athletes involved or, or do you just kind of chalk that up to man, it's probably going on anywhere and everywhere and more than we even realize? Yeah, I, I was 
I was not surprised to know that there were people who were doing it. Uh, I think I was surprised to the, I mean, just by the situation in general. And then I, I was, got the feeling i think a lot of people in iowa had the feeling that this had to have been something that was going to happen other places so i think the surprise is more in the fact that it happened in iowa and then it happened nowhere else uh across the country or at least hasn't happened uh to this point and and nothing has been you know has come out and been stated about anything like it like that to this point by any other state so uh i think that that's that part is surprising but i mean if, if you turn on the TV up here in Iowa, you know, on like turn on network TV or something like that, especially like you think on a Sunday afternoon during football games, and I'm sure it is like this everywhere, but man, it, it is, it's especially crazy. The, the sports betting commercials, I mean, the amount of billboard space that's been taken up by sports betting and I guess everywhere, you know, and so to think that, you know, these college students would never place a bet or something like that when it's as prevalent as it is in society in some of these states is just is really hard for me to believe. And, you know, that I don't know what the answer to that is. I don't know if it means, uh, you know, that we continue with this current system the way that it is. But um, I think that if it was the kind of thing that more people wanted to dig into, uh, it would probably become a much bigger issue than what many people realize probably pretty quickly. There was a time for two or three years when Iowa State was on the up, maybe longer than that, actually, when Campbell arrived and then, of course, played for the Big 12 title. The expectations were incredibly high. And then the last couple of years, a little bit deflated, especially last year. What would you say, on a scale of 1 to 10, is the confidence level for this season, for Matt Campbell and the Cyclones? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I... I, for Matt Campbell and the Cyclones, I mean, I think the confidence level is high. I, and I'll reiterate, I think that this story is going to kind of weigh on people's minds for a while until we get some clarity on some of this stuff. So uh, just because, yep. I mean, it, if you're in a situation, and this is all hypothetical. Like I said, I don't know who the people are. Nobody knows who people are. But it's like, if you are going to lose a handful of starters, you know, certainly then, uh, and you're going to lose them for half the season or you're going to lose them for the whole season or whatever it may be, that would put a significant damper on anything that uh, you know that you're you're looking or feeling good about going into into the season. So that you know that's the big piece of that. But I mean, I think Iowa State fans are hopeful that this team can get back to a bowl game and, and be back in the postseason, and um, it'll just be a one year blip. And and at the end of the day, too, Iowa State lost a bunch of really close games last year to where mm-hmm. you know you feel like there can be some sort of return to the mean a little bit and you can reverse one or two of those. You reverse two of them and Iowa State's in a bowl game last year. So uh, it's just, you know, kind of the way that the ball bounces. And obviously at a program like Iowa State that doesn't recruit at an elite level, uh, you're going to kind of go through swings, you know, and I think that that's what the reality is, is that you're hopeful that now Iowa State's going to go back onto, back onto that upswing and, um, you know, start having a more veteran team. But, but like I said, there's just, there's certain things that, we just don't have answers to that uh, that right now could certainly play a role in, in the way that the season or the way that you view the season going into it. All right, last thing, Jared, it's not football, it's basketball. Bob Huggins out at West Virginia. You know about the incident over the weekend. Uh, that leaves a hole in West Virginia. They'll have probably some very nice candidates. Your thoughts about how it just overall affects the Big 12 and your thoughts on the story itself. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's significant just for the, the Big 12 when you lose a, a Hall of Fame coach. And, you know, it's, it's really sad just the way that, that everything had to transpire and for the way that, you know, really the last, whatever, I guess it's been six weeks or two months, um, you know, since the incident on the radio in Cincinnati and then uh, and then to have this happen over the weekend, really horrible way for a, a Hall of Fame career to come to an end and, and you hope that you know coach Huggins can get some help you know with, with whatever it is that he's dealing with at this point but uh, I mean think about how attractive that job has to be when you consider what they were able to do from an NIL perspective with their transfer class and uh, it sounds like they were able to you know really do great work in that in that sense to, to put together a really good class you're going to walk into having a talented team if you can figure out a way to keep them all in um, that's what I think will be the big story here in Big 12 basketball over the next, you know, 30 days is is how well West Virginia or how good of a job West Virginia can do in keeping that roster together. Uh, now that Coach Huggins will not be the head coach, and 
uh, it'll be interesting to see because uh, if you uh, if you slip it off, we know what, uh, how tough this league can get for, for anybody. Thank you, Jerry. Great stuff. Appreciate it. Have a great week. Jared Stansberry, CycloneFanatic.com with us on 365 Sports. All right.